There, there are no better fans than in the UK. I, I've been everywhere, and you guys are amazing, man. And, and you know what? Wait, before you clap, I just want to say this. So polite, man. So nice. Everybody I've met either shook my hand, gave me a hug, a high five, a fist bump, and I, I can't thank you enough. You know, this was a tour that I didn't know if I could make because I've been on a, a, a speaking tour. I speak at uh, schools all over the world. And, and thank you. Thank you. And uh, we, we, we wanted to fit this in, and it works out perfect because when I go home, I go back on tour on Wednesday, and the timing couldn't have been better. But I am so glad I came because, you know, guys, you guys might have had a good time, but I tell you, I had a great time. I'm so blessed to be here. Thank you for having me. And, and, and you, um, I, I believe it was sort of back in the early 90s, WCW came and toured. And I think you fought a guy, you opened the tour with a guy called Diamond Dallas Page. Oh, yeah. Any memories yes. of that guy? What's he up to these days? Oh, he, li he lives 20 minutes from my house, so I see him enough, okay? <laughs> we he, he, do, you yeah. know, we, we have so much fun together because we both found something after wrestling to be inspired in our life and to really make a difference with his DDP yoga and my school programs. It's just been a blessing. So when we get together, it's like we just share stories of things that we have done to help other people. And there, there's no greater joy in life than helping another person. Magnificent, magnificent. And so I, I, I make no secret of that when I've been hosting some of these panels. Um, for a lot of us in the UK, we, unless you were quite posh and or rich and could afford satellite TV, you could not watch wrestling. There was no way to watch it. The only way we would see it was at one or two in the morning on ITV when WCW Pro or Worldwide would be on TV. And I, I think it's safe to say that Johnny B. Bad was one of the icons that caught our attention and made us watch and made us tune in every week. So thank you for that as well. Oh, it's a blessing to teach you a lesson. Oh! Because <laughs> you know uh, I'll kick your booty with my tutti frutti. Oh. Uh, because I'm a bad man. <laughs> I can die happy now. Um, no, and, and that as well, just, you came from the boxing background, you went to WCW. Um, what was your transition from boxing into wrestling like? It wasn't easy, you know, um, it, I, I got into wrestling late, very similar to Diamond Dale's page. I was 31 when I, when I started wrestling with WCW. And uh, it, was a, it, was a, it was a tough transition because, um, Dusty Rhodes gave me this character, Johnny B. Bad. And, uh, you know, they put me on the road. So I was so green, I didn't even really know how to wrestle. So they put me on the road with some of the most talented guys you could imagine. Um, guys like Ricky Morton, Steve Regal, Arn Anderson. Guys that really knew the ropes, I mean, were unbelievable. And, and helped me to become a better wrestler. And I, I won Rookie of the Year my first year. And then um, I believe it was two years later, I was, I was voted most improved wrestler. And it's because of people like that, working with people like that, that really helped me out. Oh, well, that is very similar to DDP in that yes, regard as exactly. well. Because you start out, you have that, you already have. The bit that you can't teach is being larger than life and being able to grab people's attention. And then the wrestling comes later. And a lot of folk will rest on that, but you didn't. And, and certainly in, nine, in the 90s, when a lot of WCW was the Dungeon of Doom, it was maybe more about characters. You were, not quietly, but quite modestly, tearing the effing house down with all kinds of people like Arn Anderson, like uh, Brian Pillman, the yeah. late Brian Pillman, um, all kinds of folk. Are there any memories, uh, any particular matches in that era that stand out to you as being satisfying? Well, you just mentioned flying Brian Pillman. We had one of the best matches at Fall Brawl uh, that I, I will always remember. And guys like um, DDP and I usually opened the pay-per-view and we would look at each other and say, man, we are going to steal the show. And that's the attitude, anybody out there that is becoming a wrestler, you've got to have that attitude that you're going to have the best match on the card. And we often had really good matches together. Um, uh, working with, with Steve Austin, the, the blessing I had working with Steve is that we wrestled so much in WCW together that when we got to the WWE, we wrestled so much in there. We, and I think our King of the Ring um, match was one of the better matches too uh, that I've had. And uh, I've been so blessed to wrestle with some of the greatest people in professional wrestling. Hey guys, when you think about the Attitude Era, I was in a dressing room that I could look around and see The Rock, see Stone Cold Steve Austin, see Shawn Michaels, see Triple H. 
Um, you know, the, the list goes on and on. I mean, when I first got there, Ultimate Warrior was even there. You know, it was an incredible time in professional wrestling. So I was blessed to wrestle some of the greatest wrestlers that ever wrestled in this ring. That's so humble of you as well. And, and that moment, see, I, I remember watching like two in the morning, as is the way, uh, WrestleMania that year, when, and there was no real internet there. You just kind of went, turned up on our screens. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> and no pun, must have been a wild time. What was it like? To, and it was, at, I think it was at WrestleMania, you actually debuted backstage. Or it was around that time, because that was how you and Triple H. Well, the, you know, obviously the storyline was I was bringing in Sable yeah. into this, into my, she was my wife at the time. I was bringing her into the wrestling. So we wanted to figure out an angle to work. And of course, with Triple H losing to the Ultimate Warrior at WrestleMania, what better way to start was having me feud with him and him have Sable as his valet. And then of course me be the knight in shining armor, take Sable away. And then she became my valet uh, for many years until I became marvelous Mark Merrow and became kind of a bad, kind of a, bad guy mm. kind of a bad guy as well there's so much going on um tell you what was anthony and and anthony the hardest working man in british wrestling um can we get a question who's got a question for mr merrow we have one over here sorry there's a lot of steps involved in this hi mark just got hi. a uh, kind of two questions in one were you a fan growing up of the wrestling business and also who was your introduction when you're making a transition over from boxing into wrestling? Um, were you a fan of wrestling growing yes. up and, okay. and who were the people that inspired you at that point? That's a great question. I, I grew up in Buffalo, New York and at that time we watched wrestling on television. There was guys like uh, some of the names like back then were Johnny Powers, Chief White Owl, uh, Boba Brazil, the original Sheik. And I remember my dad, I was only like um, eight or nine years old. My dad took us to the Buffalo War Memorial to watch my first wrestling match. And the headline was the Sheik versus Boba Brazil. And I remember that the Sheik pulled out a pencil and he started stabbing Boba Brazil in the head. And next thing you know, Boba Brazil was just bleeding all over the place. And I was scared to death. So I said to my dad, I go, dad, why aren't the police coming? <laughs> And, and then he started coming out of the ring and I thought he was coming to get me. And I said, Dad, we gotta go, we gotta go. And my dad goes, relax, relax. I was like terrified. So long story short, guys, I get into professional wrestling. I'm wrestling in, in Detroit and who comes backstage was the original Sheik. And I could not wait to tell him that story. And he laughed so hard because he just, he knew what, how he could get his character over that he could scare a little kid that much. But, uh, I mean, when you think about it rationally, a maniac coming at you with an HB pencil is terrifying. <laughs> yes. uh, that happened in Weatherspoons. And there was a second part of the question as well. So when you made the transition from the boxing world to the wrestling world, we, we heard a bit about the, the wrestlers that helped you improve. Right, right. At the beginning, who helped you with that transition? Who was there at the beginning That's for another you? really good question. And I got to tell you, it was Dusty Rhodes. Because uh, Dusty Rhodes came up with the character. But I got to say, some of my fondest memories of wrestling was, was Dusty Rhodes teaching me how to become Johnny B. Bad. He would, he would say like this, he'd say, now, when you walk in the ring, I want you to walk up to the microphone and I want you to say, I'm so pretty, I should be born a little girl. And I go, oh, Dusty. I, I, Dusty, I don't know if I could do that. He goes, no, no, do it, do it like that. And you know, Dusty was so flamboyant, you know, and of course he's always doing, you know, you gotta say, I'm a bad man. And he showed me and taught me all those things that I eventually brought into the ring, and we just really had fun with it. But Dusty and I would get laughing so hard with him showing me how to do the character. Because remember, I was a tough kid from New York, a boxer, learned how to be this feminine, you know, out of control, flamboyant guy with lipstick on, you know? I don't know. <laughs> so it was all new to me, but it was a lot of fun. Oh, man, um, we can't, we'll never get enough Dusty stories. So uh, over there, my friend, we'll, we'll come to you in a moment. Hi, Mark. Um, Hi. When you moved from WCW to WWF, you had to give up the Johnny B. Bad character and become, no offense, just Mark Merrill. Right. Uh, was that intimidating for you, or did you see it as a blessing? You know what, it was very, it was very difficult, and that's, that's a really good question, because a lot of people don't know this, is that 
giving up the Johnny B. Bad character was very tough because Vince thought he could do something similar to that, but there was lawsuits going back and forth with the Monday Night Wars. So they wanted to stay completely away from Johnny B. Bad. So Vince came up with this character, Wild Man Mark Merrill. And I said, Vince, what is, what is a wild man? And he goes, well, can you do a Tarzan yell? I was like, man, I, Vince, I don't got a very strong voice. I don't think I can do a Tarzan yell. Like, oh, oh, oh. So anyways, um, it was a really, it was a character that I don't think the audience really got behind. And it was hard for me to get behind because it was so opposite what I've always done. And of course, bringing my wife along, Sable, who becomes bigger and bigger every week on Raw, and then she's selling merchandise second to only Stone Cold Steve Austin. It, it was very, you know, big shoes to fill, but I was so blessed because, you know, we were married, so I was so happy that she's doing so well. I got the first guaranteed contract at WWF. I broke the glass ceiling. So I'm getting paid the same whether I win or lose, but I was, I was really hoping they would have done more with the character as far as, like when I became Intergonal Channel Champion. I was really hoping they'd let me keep that belt a little longer, you know, work with some of the top guys mm -hmm. and really get over a little bit more. But, you know, guys, all the paths we take in our life, they ended up right where I am right now, and I couldn't be happier. But all roads brood you here, fantastic. Hey, I'm in Manchester, okay? <laughs> yeah. Also, I mean, it's an interesting thing that you, men you sort of mentioned this. You're, you're triggering little memories as we go along here. So at the start of 1997, it, you had started to become a bit more aggressive. You know, it was some, yes. There were some signs that you were maybe going down a darker path, but then obviously you, you were hurt at that point, and then you took some time off and came back as the marvelous one. Um, was that, I'm, I'm not, that must have been frustrating. Uh, well, it was, it, it, was, it was kind of a relief in a sense because I knew where the storyline was going. Mm -hmm. So I knew that I had to be a really bad guy to get Sable to the top. You know, like she had a really, I like, every, you know, the, when we do things like I'd have her come out in a potato sack and she'd rip it off and she'd have a, a string bikini on or something. I'd dress her as a reindeer and she'd come out and she'd have a bikini on, you know. So every week on Raw, she would make me look bad until the day that we finally are going to face each other in a pay-per-view match. And it was to, to, to rip up the contract for Sable. And of course, I tricked her and beat her one, two, three, and just became uh, more and more of a jerk. And so that was kind of fun when, you're doing, when you know you're doing your job and the fans hate you, you're doing your job. So whether they cheer for you or they hate you, you got to do your job. Perfect. Go ahead, huh? Hi, Mark. Hi. Um, what was your like, worst fan experience that you've had? Worst fan experience. Worst fan experience. Um, boy, I don't, I don't remember having a lot of bad fan experiences. Um, let me try, let me just think for a second. Uh, Was it when yeah, someone okay, asked? I, I got one, I just thought of one that, um, we, Sable and I had a little daughter named Mariah. We, we, I still do, <laughs> I still love my daughter. <laughs> still, yeah, still with me. Uh, and uh, what happened was, is when I brought, my wife into wrestling, we both became very well known. So whenever we went somewhere, like we'd be on the road all the time, then we'd get off the road to, to go take our daughter out to dinner or something. And she'd be, the first thing she'd go is, they recognize you. And she, it, it hurt her so badly because she just wanted to be with her mom and dad. And I saw the pain that she would go through because wherever we went, people recognized us and wanted to get pictures or autographs and things like that. And I remember we were at a, a, a barbecue restaurant just having a meal. And, you know, you're eating beans and chicken and stuff. And a fan just comes up and says, hey, can we get a picture with you guys? And I remember the first time I've ever, and I wouldn't even say get angry, but I just got like a little frustrated because I seen the look on my daughter's face. I said, can you please just wait till we're done eating? That's all I said, just wait till we're done eating. And I'd be glad to take a picture or sign an autograph and... And, but that's, that's probably the worst. I, I, luckily, I have never really had really bad fan experiences. Um, but uh, thanks for the question. Great question. You okay, Mark? Um, you, you mentioned before about Dusty Rhodes was kind of the person, as you were first getting into wrestling, that was quite influential. 
now that you've said that, what, what was it like to work with his son? Because obviously when you come to WWF, you then work quite heavily with Goldust for, for a period of time. And then you obviously had a WrestleMania match with him. Did that feel like a bit of a full circle moment? Or was it just kind of working with anyone? You, you're talking about Dustin? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Dustin is a great worker. He, he was tremendous. And I mean, still is. Uh, he, he's just such a, and he's such a good guy. I got to tell you a quick funny story about uh, Dustin was that uh, I was wrestling uh, Dustin at SummerSlam. And when I came, when I, when, I, when I wanted to come up with a good finisher, I learned how to do the wild thing, which is a shooting star press, which no one has ever done in the WWE before. And I said to Dustin, I said, Dustin, I got this new move I want to try. Now, I never did it in the ring. I did it on a, I t a funny story was that I took my daughter to gymnastic class and at gymnastic class, they'd have a pommel horse that you would, you could jump off and do a flip. Well, I would jump off the pommel horse, but my flip was landing on my, my stomach with my hands and my knees. And all the kids at gymnastic would be laughing at me thinking, why does he keep landing on his face? You know, like, well, anyways, um, I said to Dustin, I said, Dustin, I got this new move and I'm gonna call it the wild thing. It's a shooting star press. He goes, well, what is it? I go, I stand on the top rope, I do a flip and I land on you with my hands and my knees and we hit chest to chest. He goes, he goes, you're gonna land on me? And you know, thinking about how hard it would be to land it. And I go, man, I go, it's, I've never done it before. He goes, just do it. So what I gotta do is I gotta take him in like a Samoan drop and drop him in the corner right here, go to the top rope and do the, the wild thing. And we nailed it the first time I ever did it, and I've never heard anybody on it all those, all those years I had to do that because unfortunately, it became my finisher where I gotta do it every night. And when you do that every night, it, I'm really taking the, the blow because I'm laying on my knees and my hands. So it takes its toll on your, on your body, on your knees especially, and your, your joints because the, the pressure coming down is quite a bit. You probably missed using the left hook at that point. I missed the tutti frutti. <laughs> tutti frutti. Um, I tell you what, we've got time for one more question. And you're around, dude. Um, I just got a hand up over here. So, uh, I mean, no pressure. This is the last question of For the Love of Wrestling 2024. Hi, Mark. Two quick questions. Do you still watch the product? And if you do, who would you like to work with and why? Great question, man. Um, I... I occasionally get to watch them. I mean, I'm traveling all the time, so I don't get to see, I'll always see it. But I love seeing the good thing is about uh, the, the product now is you can see a lot of the, the highlights on, on social media, on, on TikTok or, or, or uh, um, Instagram or, or things like that. And I just love the way that, uh, especially WWE, how they've built up this, this uh, WrestleMania. I mean, when I watched the other night, I saw the, the highlight of The Rock doing his little shtick and then Roman Reigns pulling his hand down. I thought that was the, the highlight, you know, was seeing that and wondering where they're going to go with it and how they figure in Cody and everything. So it's, it's really interesting. And, and it reminds me of the Attitude Era when it was so hot. And I think it's really hot right now, and I hope it continues to stay that way. And, and, and speaking of who I'd like to work with, um, my gosh, love to work with Cody or Roman or, or and, and the dream match I never really got was working with Shawn Michaels. We were tag team partners in South Africa together, but we never got to wrestle each other. And that would have been a match I would have really enjoyed. And something else. I mean, this, this is what fandom is about. You're here because you love what you do and wrestling has brought you to the life that you have now, which is, which is magnificent. Um, we're here because we love wrestling. Um, this is your opportunity just to, we'll wrap it up at this point, just to say to your final words for, the, for your time here to the good folk of Manchester. Please go ahead. Oh, man. First of all, guys, I thank you for sticking around and, and, and hearing me tonight. I, I had the, the best time here. And I just want to say that, you know, we, we all go through storms in life. Every one of us, we all go through some hard times and with the economy and the world the way it is today. And, you know, those storms that we go through in life, you know, some storms you can walk through, some storms you gotta run through, but there are gonna be some storms that come in our life that we have to hang on with everything we got. Don't let go and don't give up because I promise you, after every storm, the sun will eventually shine and it's gonna be brighter than you could ever imagine. Love you guys, thank you. 
for the love of wrestling. The final Q&A and brought the love, Mr. Mark Merrow.